Greetings and welcome to today's hour-long painting lesson. Thank you so much for joining me here today. I truly hope you enjoy. I hope you feel like you learned something. And of course, if you have any questions along the way, please let me know. I am here to help. Now, all of the tools for this lesson are going to be listed in the video description. As you can see on the canvas, today we're going to be painting a large weeping willow tree atop a vast pond, and I'm going to begin to do so with a large damp square-headed brush and some titanium white paint. I'm applying this to the base of my horizon, and then I'm slowly blending upwards with horizontal strokes. Then I'm taking that same titanium white, I'm going down to the back of the water, the back of the pond, I'm applying it there and I'm blending it forward. That is going to get us started on our reflection, which we will work on very shortly. Then I'm going to grab equal parts, primary blue and titanium white, I'm going to apply that to the top of the sky, and then I'm going to blend it down smoothly. The goal here is really to render a gradient now, as we get closer to us in the foreground, in the water, I'm beginning to interject more and more primary blue into our mixture. And this is going to make the painting slightly more saturated in the foreground, and it's also going to get a little bit darker as well, which makes sense because we're getting farther and farther away from the light on the horizon. So right now, I'm creating some foliage for the background, I'm taking a lot of titanium white, a lot of our primary yellow, a tiny bit of primary blue just to give it a little bit of green in it. Primary blue is a much stronger pigment than primary yellow, so when you're mixing the two and you want to get something fairly bright, use much more primary yellow. And if you want a really evenly mixed green, I'd even do maybe two-thirds yellow, one-third blue. Now I'm taking this and I'm just dabbing it on the top of my tree line and occasionally to make it a little bit more interesting I'm rotating my brush in the air and then doing another little tapping motion on that tree line that way it looks like the trees and all of the implications on the horizon are always evolving and changing it'll make it look much more interesting and captivating. Now here I'm just going through and I'm drawing all of my little lily pads with the smaller square headed brush. At this point the lily pads are about the size of the edge of the square headed brush so it's a very easy cathartic process. I'm just kind of layering them on and I'm trying to ensure that they're always different and evolving. Some of these lily pads are going to be much darker than others. Some of them are going to get a lot more highlight than others. Some are slightly under the water so they can be much more transparent. So I can use more water in different mixtures. Now here I'm continuing to work on my lily pads, but at this point you're probably starting to see a little bit of detail in the ones in the middle ground. And that's because as we progressively move forward with our subjects in our paintings, we want them to slowly become more elaborate, to have more pieces of them. When things are in the background and you want to render a lot of depth, generally we will simplify them. Not in the same way that we would if we were a kid, but we take detail and we're a little bit more impressionistic with our stroke. And we do that because the eye can't really focus that far away and gather all of that information. So it looks much more natural when you build up detail as you move forward in the painting. So in the background, the lily pads are almost just taps on the canvas, but as we move into the middle ground and they get larger because of perspective, we start to see little bits of detail and highlights on them. Here you can see that I'm adding some yellow that's kind of more of a gold to the side that is closest to us, and that's just the lip of the lily pad kind of coming up and then light coming through it and giving it some beautiful backlighting. Then I'm switching over to a medium sized square headed brush that way I can pick up some additional pigment and cover a bit of a larger surface area that I'm going to begin to block in the base layers of my ground here. We're going to come back in, we're going to add some highlights and some mid-tones, but this is very much the foundational process, and it's a process I talk about through a lot of these hour-long paintings, but it's very much like building a house. You start with digging the hole, you start with pouring the concrete, and initially 
you're just laying the foundation. It isn't something that isn't wildly aesthetic, but you have to believe in the vision of what it can be when you build on top of it. And that's exactly what we're doing here. We're just creating a foundation that we will then expand upon and make something truly beautiful with. Here I'm creating a bit more of a highlight and we're going to apply that along the edge, again where the light is going to be hitting to the greatest degree. Then I start to tap and blend it to the left hand side, I tap and blend it to the right hand side, I tap and blend it backwards as well. And through this process, we render a three-dimensional ground that also doesn't stand out too much and that still makes sense lighting-wise within the context of the rest of the painting. This tree, this weeping willow, is very close to us and I think it's to the point where I could justify adding a bit of texture. So I'm doing a lot of this tapping motion, but I'm not pressing my brush into the canvas. Again, I'm just letting paint rest on paint and it's this very subtle application that's going to allow paint to build up and eventually create some texture. I'm not going to have too much of it in the painting, but it really can aid it. And it's great because when paint protrudes off the canvas and light from the room catches that, it creates additional actual three-dimensional depth in the painting and adds this extra level of another light source. So it can be really interesting, especially if you're playing with a painting that gives off a lot of light because then it makes sense contextually as well. So here I'm just going back and I'm doing a lot more of that tapping motion, creating a lot more texture. And when you're creating texture, remember it's just pigment on pigment. It's not bristle on canvas or bristle on pigment. And because of that, you can only really add so much. You kind of need to let it dry a little bit and then come back to it. And that's really what I was doing there. This tree here, it's going to be fairly large. It's going to be fairly textured. And remember that the light can't get through it. So it's going to work its way around it. I'm going to start painting this tree with the base layer and the foundation, like what we talked about before with the ground and everything else. And we're just going to paint it fairly flat to begin with. Now my brush is still fairly damp and that's important because it's going to allow me to make very sharp edges around the branches. I don't want it to look chalky, I don't want it to look messy. We are now in the foreground, that impressionistic stroke that may have worked in the background or middle ground is now not ideal. So I'm trying to ensure that all of my applications along the edges of the bark are very sharp. Then I'm taking that paint and I'm blending it inwards. So here I try to add a highlight on the edge and then I work my way backwards, but I leave a little bit of space for a little bit of a dark area. And that way I'm continuously ensuring that my bark looks like it's sticking out. And I'm doing this all with a tapping effect instead of a brush stroke. That way I get to render each and every piece of bark as opposed to having a very smooth tree. Now from there, I'm switching over to the smaller round headed brush and we really haven't used this. It's great because it does have a soft feathered edge. It's going to always create a little bit of a gradient on all sides. So I like to use it for softer applications like clouds, mist, fog, all of those different things. Here we're adding some light, which it's also great for because you're going to want a soft blend. And I'm adding some additional light down into the water with those horizontal strokes. I'm making it so that that light in the background is coming forward in a really nice reflection in a similar area to where the larger piece of foliage is falling from the tree. So I am using this horizontal application. I do have a good amount of water on my brush so it is semi-transparent and so that the edges blend very smoothly into the pre-existing blues of the water. And what I generally like to do in these scenarios is add a very light touch of application to the water in the center of where my reflection is going to be. And then I drag it off to the left and the right and I apply slightly more pressure or less depending upon what will get me the better gradient of opacity going from a very stark pigment in the middle going out to almost being completely invisible and clear on the left and the right hand side but you want it to slowly dissipate into something that's clear on both sides to render a reflection that looks very subtle and nice and we do want a subtle reflection in this piece because it is meant to be much more calm 
and relaxed. Hey there, it's Ryan O'Rourke. I truly hope you enjoyed today's little extra video. It was essentially a cut up version of one of the many hour long lessons which we offer over on patreon.com. Over there you'll also find digital sketches of the 10 minute painting lessons, digital sketches of these hour long painting lessons, and a bunch of reference photos as well. So if any of that interests you, or if you just want to support the channel, go over there and check it out. It is a pleasure to make these long form videos and I love to share them with all of you. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you next Saturday with a new video and above all, as always, stay creative.